Joey Russo. Monday. Fabulous. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> okay, I'm your halftime entertainment for today. And I want to thank, uh, first of all, I want to thank Ed. You know, Ed uh, has been around a long time and uh, we've shared a lot of years together with MNCA and MRAA. Nobody, nobody in this industry works harder than Ed Lofgren on training and education. Give him a All right, so here's my task. I gotta tell you about 50 years of MMTA in 22 minutes. But it's more than 50 years, it's actually 60 years. Because we need to go back to the origins of the boating industry here in Massachusetts and what came before MMTA. So, was my friend here? Here's the birth of the boating business in Massachusetts. It happened at a place called Mechanics Hall on Huntington Avenue in Boston. This is the site of the now Prudential Center and the Heinz Auditorium. <laughs> this lovely structure was built in 1892 and it housed all of the major events in Boston uh, at the end of the 19th century and through most of the 20th century up until they tore the building down in 1959 to make way for the Prudential Center expansion. So how many people in this room can say they were inside that building before they tore it down? Thank you, Doc. Mary, Dick Egan, and me. This is a photo of a photo of the interior of the building. It was a grand hall, extremely high, lots of natural light. You can see it had a balcony surrounding it with a lot of stage grandstand seating, but a huge open floor. And this is what it was used for in the early 50s. It was a New England sportsman show. And on that grand floor, they would set up a tank and the sportsmen would do log rolling and they would do you know, all kinds of outdoorsy stuff. And uh, down in the basement of this building is where the boats were at. The sportsmen took over the first floor, more or less, and when boats started to become popular after the war and the early uh, settlers of our industry wanted to bring their boats to the marketplace, there were no boat shows. There was the New England Sportsman Show. I had a two-hour conversation with Dick Egan the other day from Crosby Yacht Yard, who is the senior member of MMTA, by the way. It's not me. I'm not the oldest guy in the room. I'm the second oldest guy in the room. <clears throat> so we had a great conversation about <coughs> the boats at uh, Mechanics Hall. And uh, Dick told me that uh, his dad back then, uh, which was a Bay State Boat Company, he remembers that they were on the first floor. So there were some boats upstairs, but most of us were stuck in the basement of this, uh, you know, at that time it was a, almost a 60-year-old building made out of stone and wood, and it wasn't too friendly downstairs. But this is where boating was born here in Massachusetts. Here's my dad's contract with the New England Sportsman's and Boat Show for 1954. Uh, he took a space in there for $460. That was just in the picture that you saw a couple of minutes ago. Um, I referenced my father's business in 1954 only to validate why I get to do this today. Uh, that's his boat business in 1954. Our company was founded in 1940, but this is 1954. And the house to the right is where we lived. I'm an only child. So I come home from school, it's 1954, I'm six years old, I don't go in the house, I go in the business, because that's where my mom and dad are. He's running the business, she's answering the phone, she's doing the bookkeeping. I'm a six year old with big ears and big eyes, listening to everything that's going on, soaking it all in, and there's no more fun place for a little kid to be than in a boat store, right? So I, I guess I've been blessed that my parents found an industry that's uh, a lot of fun. 
Okay. So voting matured here in Massachusetts, and we didn't need to be an afterthought to a sportsman show. So in 1957, the former Boston Herald Traveler newspaper company rented the Commonwealth Armory on Commonwealth Avenue, and they started the first New England Mojo in 1957. That building went away in 2002 to make way for the Aganis Arena. Now it's part of BU. You. you know about that, don't you? Okay, here's where it gets serious. Uh, I'm going to invoke this name often in my presentation because it was Frank J. Farrell who uh, was instrumental back in the 50s to start the first boat show. He was an employee of the Herald Traveler. He was in ad sales. And he would go around and sell ads to boat dealers uh, for the Sunday paper. So he got familiar with the marine dealer community. And when the proposed boat show was to be held at the Commonwealth Armory, the Herald Traveler made him the boat show director. Because he knew all the boat dealers. So he sold all the floor space to the first New England Boat Show in 1957. <clears throat> and then uh, Vietnam happened, and the Army needed the uh, armory for other things, and the Boat Show was asked to leave. And there wasn't another good facility in the city to move the Boat Show. The Mechanics Hall was being torn down to build a Prudential Center. That, that building started in 1960 and didn't finish until 1967. So for a period of time, the boat show was destined to be homeless. But uh, Frank had instincts, Frank had connections, Frank was political. He moved the boat show to Suffolk Downs Racetrack, of all places. It was the worst experience for us that had to do a boat show at Suffolk Downs. Here's why. The boat show was under the grandstand. The floor wasn't level. The ceiling was 45 degree angle. Um, beyond those three gentlemen standing there, there is a loading door, but I remember it clearly. You went in the loading door about 30 feet, took a 90 degree turn, went about another 30 feet and another 90 degree turn to get the boats in. It was terrible. It was not a good place to hold a boat show. Even though they tried to put a, what I'll call, perfume on a pig, Perfect amount of pig. They uh, renovated the front to make it more consumer friendly. That was 1961. We couldn't wait to get out of there. This was the biggest thing that Suffolk Downs ever did, besides race horses, was to host the Beatles concert in 1966. I couldn't even find a photo online or in any of the archives that we ever held a boat show at Suffolk Downs. They did not care about us one bit. So, 1956. 1956 was the year that the New England Marine Trade Association was founded, not this association. We had a parent back then. It was the New England Marine Trade Association, which is still in existence today. 1956, because Frank Farrell was promoting the new boat show that was coming at Commonwealth Armory, he rallied his customers, his boat dealer customers, and formed a trade association. He was the impetus to form the New England Marine Trade Association. He called on his friend at that time, Bob Egan, who's Dick's father and his son Greg's grandfather. Bob Egan from Bay State Boat Sales was the first president of the New England Marine Trade Association, 1956. We jump ahead to 1964. This is our first year, 1964. MMTA was founded for these primary reasons. To promote recreational boating was obvious. We needed it. We were an industry kind of uh, disjointed and fragmented and fractured. We needed to convert, uh, combat some adverse legislation that was going around at the time. And Frank, in his intuitiveness, was positioning MMTA to somehow be involved 
with the proposed new Boston Boat Show, which was contemplated for the new auditorium at the Prudential Center in 1967. Now, the New England Boat Show was running over its up and downs, and it wasn't very pretty, but it was all we had at the time. But everybody who was paying attention knew that a new auditorium was coming online for the city of Boston in 1967. And that's where the boat show needed to be moved to. Back to MMTA's uh, incorporation. Here's the original Articles of Incorporation that Marie Hayward found online. And I'll share with you that this organization was founded in November of 1964 by these gentlemen. It was an old boys club back then. There'll be no female signatures on this document. And there's their hand on the bottom, their signatures. This will be easier to interpret. I put it on a document so you could see who were the movers and shakers back at the time in November of 64. Thomas Goodman was our first president. He ran Tom's Marine Sales on Route 1 in Saugus. Bertram Sweetland, who lived in Somerville but ran a boat dealership in Everett called Curious Sales. Nowhere could I find who Ed Bacon was. There's no reference to what he did at the time, how he was involved in the marine industry. The directors, Adrian Karen from Peabody, he owned uh, Beverly Marine Basin. Ed Billings from Shrewsbury on Lake Quinn Sigamon, Billings Marine. John Russo is my dad. We lived in Stoneham then. Rupert Nichols from Allen Harbor Marine in Howardsport. David Delano from Arlington, of course he's Marine on the Mystic Lakes. And there were three other incorporators. Uh, Bill King from Boston, he owned a uh, marine hardware distribution company called Harrington and King at the time. Uh, Bob Ellsmiller, who was from Wellesley, uh, I believe he was on Route 1 or maybe Route 9, uh, owned a boat dealership called Dandy Boats. And then there was Larry Healy, who worked for the Boston Globe. I found it curious that we had a newspaper guy as one of our original incorporators. Uh, but you'll see why later, why that was important. I referenced the fact that we were founded in November of 1964. If you were able to look up here at the date of this um, document, this is February 1965. This was three months after we were founded. This validates the fact that we were founded for one of those three primary reasons, one of which was to combat adverse legislation. Boating was becoming very popular. The state wanted to grab us for some tax revenue. It was called a property tax at the time. And that was the real impetus to get organized so that we could combat this uh, activity. But don't lose sight of the boat show. Boat shows are what makes trade organizations happen in our industry. If you look at the oldest, strongest, healthiest trade associations in the marine industry around the country, there's one common denominator. They all own a boat show, operate a boat show, endorse or sponsor a boat show for a positive revenue stream. So it's always been important to MMTA to stay affiliated with the boat show in Boston. So 67 is a pivotal year for MMTA. Frank Farrell resigned from the Herald Traveler newspaper as the director of the New England Boat Show. He becomes the director of shows for a company back then that was known as the Sherman Expo Group at the New Heinz Auditorium. Frank was hired to start up, excuse me, Frank was hired to run a sportsman show there because the sportsman show went away when the uh, Mechanics Hall was torn down. Frank was hired to run a camp show at the Heinz, and he was also hired to run a boat show at the Heinz. At this point in time, Frank um, helped arrange for the New England Marine Trades Association to sign a 10-year endorsement agreement to launch the all-new Boston Boat Show. He knew this was the right venue, he knew he needed to bring a trade association in. He knew he needed to rally the boat dealers. And he knew that the association would need a revenue stream. 
Our revenue stream then was a trickle down from New England Marine Trade. MMTA was only three years old at this point, and we didn't have any clout. We were still a chapter of the New England Marine Trade Association in terms of revenue. So then the first Boston Boat Show was launched at the Prudential Center in Hines in 1967, and this is what it looked like at the time. The low building, of course, is the Hines. It's now been renovated since, and it doesn't look like that. Um, so in 1967, we launched another boat show. Now, the New England boat show is still going on at the Suffolk Downs. So at this point, now we have two boat shows in Boston competing with one another. And that lasted for 24 years. Um, living through that, it seemed like a double expense for a lot of us to participate in both boat shows. But as I reflect on it now, the reality was that the boating marketplace was so big in Massachusetts back then, you needed two boat shows to satisfy the consumer demand for boating products and services. You couldn't fit it all in one building. Even if both factions kissed and made up and joined forces, there was no way you could find a hall big enough to consolidate two boat shows. So for 24 years, we competed. It, it appeared as though we competed, but what we were doing, we were competing for consumer business. 1975. Frank Farrell becomes the first full-time executive director of this association. This is nine years after we were launched. Frank's sister, Mary Horn, becomes assistant. Mary's with us today. Mary's the glue in this organization. You'll learn more about Mary in a couple of minutes. 1982, the Bayside Expo Center, which was formerly a shopping plaza, was renovated as Expo Hall space. The New England Boat Show that was at Suffolk Downs in those less than desirable conditions moved over to Bayside Expo Center. Our Boat Show at the Heinz continued on. This is an aerial of Bayside Expo, and most of you are pretty familiar with where Bayside Expo is. But this is Dorchester Bay. Kind of looks too nice to be Dorchester Bay. On many occasions, Frank and I would have conversations about turning that into an in-water boat show venue. We just couldn't make it happen for some reason. Depth of water, parking, access, permitting. And as time went by, it just didn't happen. We always wanted to have an in-water boat show, and I'll share with you that we did it somewhere else. So in 1982, politically, Frank Farrell had to resign from MMTA because he took the job as operations manager for the new Bayside Expo. And he was now going to become the landlord of the New England Boat Show that was moving from Suffolk Downs. That was a true conflict of interest. I was president of MMTA in 1982 when Frank resigned. I thought the world was coming unglued at that time. But Frank had great instincts. He knew what he was doing all the time. Mary stayed with us. Frank went in the background. He called me daily to make sure the trade association was OK. I became acting executive director for one year while Frank went off and engineered this. And Frank became the uh, managing director of Bayside Expo Center for many years. This is a picture of a picture from um, the wall of Constitution Marina in Charlestown. I, I, Tom Cox, who's a past president, I called him. I said, I need a picture of the other water boat show that we did at Seaport World Trade. So his partner, Peter Davidoff, took a picture of what's on the wall. And I've reproduced it here. I'm sorry it's not that bright. But this is 1988. MMTA partnered with the Annapolis Boat Show Group to co-produce the first uh, in-water boat show here in Boston. This isn't actually the first location for the show. We started out at Museum Wharf, and we were there for several years. And as the show grew too big for the Four Point Channel, we moved it over to the uh, World Trade Center. And that show ran there until the recession of 1990-91 collapsed it. It's 
speaking of the recession of 1991, it was MMTA's opportunity to buy and own and operate its first boat show. <clears throat> At Bayside Expo Center in the late 80s, um, there was a show producer, uh, George Hawkins from Rhode Island, who uh, owned and operated many boat shows. And as he was aging, he decided to sell off his show properties. And MMTA, because of the leadership of Frank Farrell and because of um, the revenue streams that he created over the years with various boat shows, we had enough money at the height of a recession in 1991 to buy this show property. So MMTA bought the boat show at Bayside. In 1991, we formed a separate corporation, a for-profit corporation known as Boat Shows Inc. And we ran this boat show at Bayside from 1991 to 1999. And in 1999, we launched the reincarnation of the Boston Inwater Boat Show back at the Seaport um, Commonwealth Pier. Seaport World Trade Center. It's had a lot of names over the years. And we owned and operated this show from 1999 until the last recession caught us in 2009. 2009 was the last year we had an in-water show there. We still own this corporation and we still own this property. The weakness in the market is just has not allowed us to uh, move forward with an in-water show. And uh, just in the last couple of months, we, we sold all our floating assets, all the docks and ramps and electrical that we had purchased over the years to run the show. We sold those assets to NMMA. They are going to launch a new in-water boat show on the Hudson River next fall. And we were fortunate to turn our unwanted assets into much needed cash, which continues to be the lifeblood, the financial lifeblood of MMTA. We are a very solvent organization, by the way. I'm not the treasurer, so I'm not going to reveal anything to you. But we don't have money problems. Most trade associations have huge money problems because they don't have the revenue streams from an ongoing boat show. Um, we do. We still have a relationship. <clears throat> In, uh, well, let's see. In... What year was it? I want to get it right. In 2007, the New England Boat Show moved from Bayside Expo because it's destined to be torn down and renovated, and not renovated, but redeveloped. And the new Boston Convention Center opened in 2007, and the New England Boat Show moved there. And when they moved there, we were able to sign an endorsement, a 15-year endorsement agreement with the New England Boat Show, MMTA. Um, the, New the New England Boat Show in 2009, when the recession hit them, they sold their property to MMA. So the New England Boat Show that is now at the BCEC is owned by the National Marine Manufacturers Association. And we have a 15-year endorsement agreement with them, which will provide us a pretty nice revenue stream for a long time to come. So I'm back to Frank. Um, I'm going to read you something. I've been debating whether I wanted to read this or not, but I, you can tell I have a real affection for this guy. Open that for me. I forgot to read my notes. I don't like notes. I don't like to read from a script. But there's a lot of history here in the last 60 years. <coughs> so I did put a timeline together. I don't see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. But I got a chance to read this. <clears throat> and um, I wrote this to uh, Mary in 2001 when Frank passed. I needed to write to you to let you know how much your brother Frank meant to me and how much I'd miss him. I was so disappointed that I was not able to stay at the wake or participate in the funeral service on Saturday. I regret not being able to attend the reception, sharing stories with his friends and family. Only the death of my father's brother, coincidentally, could keep me away. I've been very fortunate in the boat business to have achieved success. I owe most of it to two men, my father 
and Frank Farrell. My father taught me how to be a good son, a good father, a good businessman by stressing family values and hard work. But outside the family business, no one taught me more about the boating industry, the boating community, or local politics than Frank. Some of my fondest childhood memories are being at boat shows with him and John at the Old Mechanics Hall, Commonwealth Armory, Suffolk Downs, Heinz Auditorium. The common thread through all these events was Frank Farrell. When I was a kid, I looked up to Frank as the god of the industry, and it was he who personally invited me into the MMTA and onto the board of directors some 25 years ago. This is already 14 years old. I was so very honored. I learned quickly watching Frank and listening to his knowledge and wisdom, and before I knew it, he had called the Marine Retailers Association and suggested that they put me on their board of directors. As you know, I became president of MRAA in 1988. I know that Frank trusted my instincts to run into the meeting and to always look for opportunities to grow MMTA, MRAA, and the marine industry as a whole. Everyone in life needs a mentor, someone to respect, look up to, and learn from. Frank was my mentor. I'm sorry that I did not visit with him near the end. However, like my uncle, I remember them both as I last saw them healthy, vibrant, and full of life. Those are the memories in my mind that I wish to remember them by, with great sympathy for our loss. So you can tell that I'm emotionally and personally attached to Frank Farrell, but this association is here today because of Frank. He was there in the beginning, he had the insight, he had the intuition, he had the contacts, he knew the politics, he knew when a building was going to be demolished, he knew when a building was going to be built, he knew where a boat show should be run, and he knew how to run it. And he knew how to run a meeting. And he had great personal contacts, relationships, and associations in this business. We all need to be grateful for this man here. He's created all of this. And I still thank him for that. <sighs> okay. Mary, I got that out of the way. So I need to tell you now about Mary. As I said, Mary is Frank's sister. She came with him in 1975 to MMTA, and she hasn't missed a meeting since. Did I get that right, Mary? Never missed a meeting. 39 years. No meetings missed. And she still does a very admirable job today. Even with her own health issues, she's there every Monday to make sure we get it done, get it done right, get it done on time. Thank you, Mary. In the 50 years of MMTA, there have been only three full-time executive directors. Frank was our first. We didn't have another full-time executive director until 2004. Leona Roach served us well from 2004 to 2009 when the recession caused her resignation. There have been two acting executive directors in the 50 years. I was one in 1982. And after Frank's passing in 2001, past president Ray Gaffey was also acting executive director for a period of a couple of years. When we hired Leona in 2004 to be our executive director, we also interviewed another very capable young lady for that same position. We liked both of their presentations so much we hired them both. We hired Leona as our executive director, and we hired Natalie Grady as our communications director. Natalie has stayed with us, and at the last uh, board meeting of MMTA, we made Natalie Grady the third full-time executive director of MMTA. I'd like to call her up right now, please. Natalie. Yes, I'd like 
to bring the gifts with you, okay? Okay. We have a couple of tokens for Mary. It's only fit that we honor Mary today. Challenge history? Come on, bring it on. Grant, what do you got? On behalf of the New England Marine Trade Association, which I've been president or chairman for the last six years, happy birthday and our best regards. Thank you. And on behalf of the Connecticut Marine Trade Association, I've been president for the last 19 years and fortunately have had a, uh, a career similar to yours, maybe not quite so successful, but similar. Again, happy birthday and best of luck. Thank you. Anyone else? We can have some fun later on by the cake and by the photographs, and uh, I'll put some of those uh, mystery pieces together for you if you need a little help. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.